All right, we got Ryan on the line, and I'm looking at an $8,826.95 check that you just made. What's going on, Ryan? Hey, Terry, how you doing? Man, doing good. I just need to know, what's the exit strategy that you use to make this 8000 bucks? You told me it, and I want you to tell the listeners what you call this exit strategy that you made, that you made this check with. What, what did you call it? I called it a virtual wholesale deal. Virtual wholesaling. Okay, and then how about yep. co-wholesaling? Didn't you use that word also? Also, yeah, I did co-wholesaling. Co-wholesaling. Use that as well. Wow. I mean, is there a difference? I mean, I don't. I've heard of both words. I don't know the difference. And uh, it, it, do you know uh, why one is called virtual wholesaling, the other one's co-wholesaling? I know it's virtual because, again, you live where? Uh, in Washington D.C. Now, this deal was done where? It was in uh, Polk County, Florida. And you did it virtually. You didn't go take a look at the property, nothing like that, right? Did it from the phone. No, I did. Okay, co-ho selling. So co-ho selling is when I tie property up and have it under contract, I find another wholesaler in that market, and if they bring the buyer, they get a fee as well for finding a buyer, bringing them to me. Wow, so they so get a fee too. Right, right. We both get a fee. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the listeners how this part, this property, it changed hands five times and everybody made money. Right, right. I did a wholesaling deal one time and it amazed me because, matter of fact, Ryan, you know what? I have a deal that I did that was just like yours. I think that was my okay. first wholesaling check, my one and only wholesale. Wait a minute. No, okay, here's what happened. A wholesaler ran an ad in the paper. I bought it, but I fixed it up and then sold it to an end buyer. So the property changed four hands, okay? It was an owner in foreclosure. There was a wholesaler that tied it up just like you did. And then they ran an ad, flipped it to me, in the, and I got it out the paper. And then I went in and fixed it up and sold it. So ours only changed four times. Yours turned five times because you had an extra wholesaler in there, right? Correct. There was two wholesalers. Okay, all right. Man, that's interesting. You know, the one thing about real estate, Ryan, there's so many ways to make money in real estate. Yeah. It's unbelievable that the amount of times you can cut it up. Hey, just think about it. When you go to escrow, there's the title company, there's the plumber, there's uh, inspectors, there's uh, fees. Everybody makes money on that hood one. Everybody's getting a little piece of the action. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. but I love it. That's what makes it unique. Hey, I was looking. It might be a little longer now, but I'm pretty sure because I just did this last week. Six months ago, you joined my coaching program. Yeah. And it's amazing. Since that time, I, I've got you down for seven properties. Okay. Right. Now, I know you're working on some more, and I'm going to get to that where you're at now. But you worked on seven properties to buy and sell. Now, is that correct? Seven, or is there more? Uh, it was about seven. Okay. I would say about seven. Pretty much, I was averaging about one a month. Yep. But you know what, man? That's pretty dang on good. You know, what that shows is you, um, <clears throat> you're you dedicated. You're going to do what it takes to be successful. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the listeners hear <laughs> what you've done, where you've been. <laughs> you, you're like, every time you call me, it's like, well, where's Ryan today? Because I expect you to be somewhere, you know, somewhere in the United States looking at some real estate. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so one more time now. Again, you've been at this for six months, and you got seven properties that you've been trying to buy and sell. And the one we're going to talk about now is this one in Florida, right? Right, right. Do you, what, what, what part of Florida is this one? Can you tell us? Uh, the one um, where uh, we did the co selling. Yeah. That's in Polk County. Uh, it's a city called Lakeland, Florida. Okay, say it one more time because you kind of muffled up there. Uh, it's uh, in Polk County. Okay. But the city is called Lakeland, Florida. All right. Now, where have you traveled? Where have you actually got up 
and traveled to look at a property before you made an offer? On this particular property, I didn't travel anywhere. Okay, now I'm talking about the seven houses out of any of your properties. Oh. See, you know what? You okay. just made a good point. You just made a good point. I'm going to try to stay on that. You didn't go okay. travel to see this property. Did you right. see That's any pictures problem. beforehand or anything? No, I saw the pictures online. Okay, so you seen the pictures online only. Yeah, that's that's on that's how I based my decision and how much I was going to pay for it. Hey, Ryan, you, you, you're real muffled, man. You're not really clear. So hopefully you're doing something with the phone right now, but kind of pull it away from your mouth maybe or give me a little bit okay. better reception, whatever you're doing. Let me see if you can hear me. Can you hear me a little bit? Oh, that's now? better. That's better. That's a lot better. I don't, want, okay. I don't want these guys to miss because that defies logic to me. Now, I'm an old school investor, and I believe you got to see everything. Now, right. you, you're new school, younger generation. Are you? I don't know if you're a millennial, but it don't even matter. But you, on all your properties, you've never went out and looked at them personally. Correct. Right? You've never went out and looked at one before you made your offer. No, I have. I have when I would go to the properties uh, at the auction, certain ones I did travel to to go look at them. Okay, before you bid on them, though, right? No. Right, you, <clears throat> before I bid on them. Okay, so how many out of the seven? Now, again, give me, give me better reception. I don't know what you're doing, but, you know, uh, give me a little better reception there. How many of them did you actually go look at out of the seven? I looked at five of them out of the seven. I actually looked at the property first, then the auction was the next day. And I won it. Okay. And okay. That's how I did it. All right. Now, what about some REOs? You've been telling me you've been doing with some REOs also. Had, did you go look at those before no, you? I never looked at. I never look at the REOs. And the one in Polk County, which is in Lakeland, I didn't look at it. I just looked at the pictures online. Mm -hmm. I was. Uh, uh, I was on my couch. In my pajamas. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, man. Quit doing that infomercial <laughs> stuff. Man, that infomercial stuff don't work. Come on, man. I heard hey, you. It does work. <laughs> That's what I did, man. I was literally, I was just chilling on the couch. In your pajamas. And, uh, in my pajamas. <laughs> uh, hey, look. Hey, look. And I was eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> no joke. And I won this property. I did everything virtually. I won the property from the bank. Hold on, hold on now, hold on now. I don't, I don't want you to do that yet because I'm trying to lead up to something here. And what happens is I try to, I try to explain first, and then let you go ahead and take off. So okay. hang tight now, hang tight. Oh, just on that little part right there. Okay. So now REOs. How many REOs have you bid on? Can, do you remember? I've bid on a few, but actually won the bid and tied up. How many properties? One to be it tied it up. Two. All right. So again, what I'm trying to get these guys to understand is, you bid it on two properties. You ain't even seen them personally in the pajamas, right. on the couch, eating cereal. In where you live at again? In Washington D.C. You live in Washington D.C. And the fact that you're making these offers where? I'm making them on my computer. Okay, now what cities and states have you made your offers on? In Florida, uh, Lakeland and the Orlando area. Did you have one in Virginia? No? No, I didn't have one in Virginia. So. Okay, all right. All right, so again, you in Washington, D.C., and you're, you're making offers on properties you haven't seen in Florida. Clear across the earth. Now... Right. What you're doing and what you're saying is you're going to get some people to open up their parameters. And come to think of it, Ryan, I have invested without seeing properties. That's when I was buying notes. So, again, I have to take that back. Now that you're rattling my brain, I have done what you've done, but not the way you have. So, all right, so you made offers. Where, again, are these properties that you're making offers on sight unseen or just looking at the, looking at the the pictures? Why Florida? Why about? Because it seems like you're doing a lot in Florida. Out of the seven houses, what seven of them are in Florida? Yeah, I did pretty much all of them in Florida. Five of them in Florida, one in Arkansas, one okay. in Philadelphia. All right, all right. Now, where are you at right now? <laughs> 
Right now, this morning, I flew to Orlando and I drove two hours to Jacksonville, Florida, to this uh, auction uh, and uh, on uh, on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And so, so what I'm are you doing looking, now? I'm driving Today. and looking at about thirty properties. Man, I'm telling you, most people won't do that, Ryan. And that's how you learn a market, no matter what market you have. And I'm in Sacramento. If I went and drove and looked at 30 properties, I did all my research on the ARV and the repairs, I would become better at estimating values. Now, if you did 30 properties in one neighborhood, similar beds and baths, then you become an expert. Okay, and that's how you know your ARV and your repairs and all that. So you're driving. How long are you gonna be there? I'll be here till Wednesday night. Okay. <clears throat> so you're gonna spend a couple days there, look at some houses, make offers on. Then you're going back where? Where are you going next? <laughs> I'll be in D.C. Okay. And I'll be home for a few weeks. Right. And you got something planned after that? It could sound like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I'll be going to Houston. They have uh, auctions uh, the first week of every month. Mm -hmm. So that'll be my next step. All right. Now that's some serious dedication for you guys that are listening. Look at what Ryan's doing. Look how much work he's putting in to be a successful real estate investor. You can't sit at home and do nothing and and make checks and want to get better at this so if ryan keeps on this pace you know you give him a year two years three years four years five years he's going to master what he's doing and he's probably going to improve his systems he's probably going to have people that are going to be working with him and he's going to be on a whole different level but he's doing the work you got to do okay a lot of people go to seminars ryan they read the books they go, you know they go to these meetup groups um they pay all the money for the for the coaching program but they don't do anything and, I, and I'll be the first, and you'll probably tell me, hey, you don't know it all, but you're willing to learn as you go and earn as you go, right? Yep, that's true. All right, so, okay, let's go over this house again now. <laughs> it's called, what would you call this strategy, Hughes, again? It's a co-wholesaling slash virtual wholesaling. <laughs> What a name. That's, that's, that's a hell of a name. <laughs> and how much is that check again? Do you know what the check is? I'll and give it, it to you. For, uh, roughly 8800 $8,826.95. And it was actually a lot more. I got it. Right. I got it. We're going to go over that too, Ryan. I'm getting ready to jump on that right now. Here we go. The bank, this is an REO, right? Right. And the bank was asking, how much is the ARV on the property? The ARV on that property was $190,000. Right. The bank had a property worth one hundred and ninety. dollars Do you know what the repairs were on it? The repairs was roughly about $35,000. All right. So you come along. You offered how much to that bank? I offered them $80,000. All right. And they accepted, right? They accepted it. Okay. So you offered eighty. dollars You got it tied up. How long did right. you have to try to get the property wholesale to someone else? How long did the bank give you? The bank gave me about 45 days. They gave you a month and a half to, before you had to bring the money to the table to close, right? Right. Okay. So that 80000 if you wouldn't have flipped it, how much did it cost you to tie that property up first? About $4,000. All right, so you got $4,000 just to tie it up. Now, right. if you wouldn't have been able to flip it in that 45 days, did you have a plan B? Were you going to bring the 80000 to the table, close it, and do something else with it? The plan was to reach out to a lender and close on it, and that would give me more time to try to uh, flip it to an end buyer, cash buyer who wants to rehab it. All right, good. Now, did you ever go through that process of finding a private lender or a lender of any sort? No, I didn't. I didn't go through it fully, but I did reach out to a few, and they was kind of telling me, yeah, we can do it for you. We're going to charge you this amount of interest. And I was like, okay, let me try to find a buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did. I did try to find a buyer. And um, I actually ran across uh, a wholesaler and was like, hey, 
you know, we got a ton of buyers in this area. All right, now hold on now. Hold on. I know where you're going. I'm going to bring okay. it back. I'm going to try to extract all the little stuff before we move on. The next thing, okay, you got your plan B. Plan C. Okay. If you couldn't have flipped it, and if you couldn't have found a lender, what were you willing to do with that 4000 I didn't get that far, but it was a good chance. I could have lost it. Exactly. If you exactly. If you can't find anything, you lose your money. And, and that that's, that's the scary part about it. All right. The risk that money. Let's deal with that. That's called risk. Okay, because without no risk, there is no reward. So, in other words, you put up four and you doubled your money because you got it done. Now, there's a lot of people, and I don't know what determines who's risky and who's not risky. There's a lot of people that says, you know what, Ryan? If there's a risk of me losing $4,000, I'm not going to do this deal. I'm going to try to beat your brain and figure out how Ryan thinks. Why did you say, you know what? Maybe you didn't even think about this, but why did you decide to risk the four when most people won't? They, they're so scared of losing the four, they don't look at what can be gained if you put the four up. So what your plan was, I'm pretty sure, you knew you was gonna get this flipped, right? I knew it, be I knew it because the, the purchase price, what I had on the contract for, and the ARV, the spread was so big, I'm like, that's a deal. Mm -hmm. It's no way that I can't get this contract um, flipped. I, and I was confident, you know, in my abilities and everything. So, uh, so you had confidence. Right. You had confidence, right? I did. Okay. I did. And where'd you get the four thousand? Did you have it in the bank account? You borrowed what? Yeah, I, I had the four thousand just okay. sitting in the bank. Somebody could have probably used a credit card too, right? Yeah, you could use a credit card. All right. See, so what what I'm trying to do is extract as much information so that person on the other line that's listening to us right now, they're going, okay, man, Ryan did it. Ryan risked $4,000. His plan A was he's going to flip it and make more than the four he put up. His plan B was, okay, maybe I can get a lender. I'll go in there and fix it up then sell it to a end buyer, person that wants to live into it. And then if plan C was, hey, if it all fails, then I'm going to lose four grand. That's pretty much the thinking process, right? Right. There you go. So if you listen, that's the process you got to go through. And you got to get the, the encouragement, the education, so that you understand how the process works. Now, I'll tell you, Ryan, even when you're doing this stuff, you don't have everything figured out, do you? There's some things you didn't know, and we're going to talk about them, okay? We're going to talk about things you didn't know that came up that... Man, it made your check a little smaller, but you still got a nice big $8,000 check. Because like you was getting ready to say, you could have made more. So tell us about the wholesaler. You were getting ready to do it, but I cut you off. Tell me about that other wholesaler. We're going to call this guy, let's call this uh, wholesaler number two. Ryan is wholesaler number one, but there's another wholesaler that comes in there. And you were telling, go ahead. So wholesaler number two was going to have the end buyer the one who, who was going to rehab the property. So that end buyer, he, you know, he was serious. He put the property under contract with wholesaler two. And the thing is, he couldn't close. We had the date set for close. He couldn't close. So the bank started penalizing me and my profits. Okay, hold on. Me. Hold on right there. We're going to come back to that. So what you're saying okay. is this. You... Offered the bank eighty thousand on a property worth one hundred ninety. Right. And you're wholesaler number one. Wholesaler number two came in, and what did wholesaler number two offer you? Wholesaler two offered me ninety five thousand. Okay, and the reason wholesaler two offered you ninety five is because you said he had what? He had a. He had a buyer already lined up for a price. Uh huh. And what was that buyer going to do? What was that buyer? How was the buyer going to exit out of the property? Now, the buyer was going to buy the property from wholesaler two. Right. They bought it from me at a price of 103. Okay. All right. Again, let's do those numbers real quick. Bank. Okay. Had an R of 190. 
Wholesaler right. number one is Ryan. What did you offer? I offered them eighty thousand. <laughs> wholesaler number two offered wholesaler number one, which is Ryan. How much? Ninety-five thousand. Okay, so that's supposed to produce a fifteen thousand dollar check for Ryan, and we're gonna talk about how it got down to eighty-eight hundred. But I just want you guys to be able to hear this clearly, what is going on, and get you to understand it. Because sometimes when we start talking about checks and real estate, we kind of leave out details. I love the details. All right, so number two offered Ryan 95, but the cash buyer on the end offered cash buyer number two how much? Okay, he offered him 103000 $103,000. So that means... Wholesaler number two was supposed to make what, Ryan? Eight grand? Eight grand. Eight grand. <laughs> Let me do the numbers. Ryan is supposed to make 15000 as a wholesaler for putting it under contract. He wholesales it right. to wholesaler number two. Okay, wholesaler number two has an end buyer that's going to pay 103000 Wholesaler number two is supposed to make eight grand. And then right. the cash buyer gets it at one hundred and three. Fixes it up, does the repairs, puts it back on the open market for hopefully 190000 or a little bit more, but let's just safely say 190000 because that's the RF. Can you guys all see the number of times this property is changing hands and everybody in between is making money? That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. Okay, so now let's talk to me about that cash buyer at the end. You said that they weren't able to close within that 45 days. Is that correct? That was correct. All right. So tell me a little bit more about that. Go into some details. So the bank said, hey, Ryan, if this end buyer don't close, you need to close with your funds. And if you can't close, we're going to charge you a per diem. A per diem. And a right. per diem is a daily rate they're going to charge you for not closing after those 45 days that you, you were under contract for. Right. Right. Okay, right. tell the listeners, Ryan, did you close in those 45 days, yes or no? No, I did Oh, he didn't close, you guys. In the perfect world, we think we have it all figured out, but sometimes things don't happen the way they should. So, do you know what the per day DM was, Ryan? It was about $200. $200 a day. So, after the 45th day, if you didn't close, $200 a day was going back to the bank for you not closing on time. Right. How long did it take to actually close? Did that cash buyer actually close eventually? Yep, he, he did close. Uh, it took about 60 days total. 60 days. So you were 15 days over the budget. All right, I was. So was that $3,000 or was it less because they didn't charge on weekends? They charge you on weekends too? <laughs> Yeah, it was about $3,000. All right, so out of that fifteen originally that Ryan was supposed to have, he had to take out 3000 because the buyer didn't close. Okay? Yep. Now, there's still another maybe 3000 that you did not get. So what happened to that other money, the 3000 that, that was a, a, a premium, like a broker's fee. Mm -hmm. the bro a broker was added into that as well. Okay. Or to the purchase price of my eighty thousand that I wanted for, they added three thousand and some change. Okay. Fee that will go to a broker. Now, was that broker working for the bank, and that's the reason why, or did that broker just show up unexpectedly? Did you know? He he was working for the bank. Okay. All right. So his job is go out and find buyers, or wholesalers like yourself, right? Right. right. Okay. Again. <laughs> So now we got a broker. He's got his hands out and says, hey, I want to get paid in this transaction because I facilitate the deal. And so he's got his hand out and he wants 3000 Okay, right. You weren't too upset that uh, you had to give him 3000 were you? No, I wasn't too upset. You know, um, it, was, it was a great experience for me and I enjoyed it, you know. I think we call that the cost of being in business. The cost for you to make your 8000 $826.95 check, 95 cent check was you had to pay someone three grand. You had to pay another three grand because your buyer didn't close on time. You had to wholesale the property and then it was going to be wholesaled again to another person in order to make that $8,826.95. So at the end of the day, 
you made how much? You made eight thousand, so you put in four, so you made four grand. No, no, no. I got my deposit back. Okay. The deposit. Oh. I right. actually asked them to not add my deposit on the HUD statement for tax reasons. Okay. So they sent me my deposit back separately. Okay. So I didn't really count your deposit. I just counted it as, okay. hey, look, you know, this is your check, 8826 and your deposit was on top of that. So you got your deposit back of four grand, and then you got an $8,826.95 check, right? Am I right or wrong? Right, right, okay, good. right. Keep, that's right. That's all right. right. Keep me straightened out here because I love numbers. I love breaking this thing down. So, again, you guys, for if you're listening... That's amazing that this house changes that many times. If Ryan got some money, wholesaler number one, wholesaler number two got some money, and then the end buyer, cash buyer got some money, and the broker got some money. There was no real estate agent on this process, right? No, it wasn't. The title company got some money. Did, um, did you have to pay any uh, any fees for like, and well, I know you probably, you didn't pay any carpenters or anything to do any work at all. You did no work on this property. No, I didn't do any work. Wow. So all you did was sat at home, give it to me again. I, you know, and, and it's funny because you see it on TV, and when you see it on TV or the infomercials on the internet, oh man, you can't do that. You can't sit at home and, you know, be in your pajamas eating cereal all day <laughs> and make money. I did it. Come on, Ryan. No, man. You, you know, are you a guru, Ryan? You're a guru, right? You're trying no. to sell some course, aren't you? <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm far from a guru. <laughs> but it's okay because when you do become the guru, you can teach other people how to do the same thing. So I'm, I'm glad right. to be a guru. I'm honored to be a guru. I, I thank the guru for teaching me. And the good thing of it is, Ryan, you're out there doing what you're supposed to do to try to make yourself some money. And this is one situation where even though you went through some tough times and some, you know, some struggle, you probably lost some sleep too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of doubt probably. How much doubt? Yeah, we, we all have doubt, but did you have a lot of doubt that, it's, that this thing might not have closed? Yeah, we, yeah, me and the other wholesaler, we were just like this buyer. We're never, we learned a lot from dealing with these buyers and not vetting these buyers and so we were frustrated we didn't think it was going to close and it ended up closing we was happy and you know we like okay let's do it again let's do it again that's right rinse and repeat you know once you get that and that's not your first check i know right that's your yeah that's your third check am i right that's your third check that you made i, I want to try to keep this one the, the, the right. information right to this deal because this deal is really kind of complicated, especially to a beginner. This is a complicated deal. Now, anyone that's been in real estate for a while knows that anything's possible in real estate, but a beginner, right now, they're probably scratching their head going, man, what the hell are these guys talking about? You know? Right. right. So, all right. So, I want you to, well, I'm going to go back now, and I think we, is there anything that I forgot, but I want you to talk about what you've learned, what you've adjusted so that you can get better um, per se, because we're going to beat your brain. But is there anything that you wanted to add that I may have forgotten in this process? Uh, uh, some details. No, I, think you, uh, I think you hit it right on the head uh, as far as uh, the details about mm -hmm. this uh, one particular deal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so you hit it right. Okay. You went through everything. All right, so what drives you, Ryan? What makes you do what you do. What makes you go get on Southwest, right? Oh, no, JetBlue. You went JetBlue. How much did it cost you for a ticket to go where you are today? Uh, round trip, uh, about $420. You spent 420 bucks. What about the hotel? Hotel, $60 a night, three nights. Mm -hmm. And then what? Uh, what about some food? So you got... Five fifty. You might spend seven hundred fifty bucks, maybe. Did you rent a car? Yeah, rent a car rental. Three days, about uh, one eight. No, no, I'm sorry. I was gonna say one eighty. Forty bucks a day. So taxes about one sixty. Okay, so let's just say seven hundred fifty bucks. You're gonna take seven hundred fifty bucks, probably from that eight thousand eight hundred twenty-six dollar ninety-five cent check. That's a that's a yep. good investment. That's a good investment. I'm just saying that because I'm tying this together. You may have got the money somewhere else, but you know, from your profits, 
you're going to pay for your next trip. So maybe you can repeat rents and do it again. All right. So what drives you, Ryan? What makes you do what you do? What's the, what's the end game, man? Why? When other people you won't know, do it, what, why do you do it? I'm doing because, you know, I just want that freedom of receiving income from real estate, being able to travel and just have fun. You know, I got, you know, I have three children and just, I enjoy the, my free time and can just do work on a computer. And when I'm on vacation or when I'm on business like this, I try to make a vacation out of it. It's just a lifestyle that I see. And, you know, I put a hundred percent into it, whether I got to spend money, travel, do whatever I have to do, but I'm always reading something, listening to the podcast, uh, you know, calling you for information, just gaining as much information as I can. Right. So I can achieve that goal. You the human sponge. That's what my karate instructor used to call me, the human sponge, because I was always asking them questions, trying to figure it out because I wanted to be great one day. But what I heard from you is the lifestyle. The lifestyle of being on the computer, the lifestyle of freedom of time, the lifestyle of being able to have some money to do what you like and spend it on the three kids. Now, I think one time you told me, I can't remember exactly, but didn't one of your kids, I think it was a daughter, said something about you making some money. She wanted to go somewhere. I might be wrong, but <laughs> it's something just sticks out of my head about you that you needed to make some money because she wanted something. Yeah, they probably said something like that. They always say something. Said uh -huh. <laughs> and they always wanna they always wanna go somewhere, so Right. And it takes know, money, it, don't it? It does. Yep, yep. So man, I'm telling you that's a that's a good day at the office. Forty five days they gave you. It took a little bit longer, but you still got that big check. All right, so <clears throat> that's what drives you. Now, most people would look at that and go, Okay, hey, now I'm a rest on my laurels, I got a check. But as, 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 as you've told us before, you're already at another place looking for more deals. How many houses did you look at today? I looked at 15. 15 in one day. Again, list, listeners, I'm telling you what, you got to listen to what Ryan's saying. It takes that amount of effort to be successful. You got to get up early, go to bed late, study all day, all night, listen, read. When I was in martial arts, they called it a way of life. Real estate, if you want to be successful, it's a way of life. What time do you quit reading and writing and studying, right? Man, I'm exhausted right now, but <laughs> I'm like, I got to get back on this computer. I got to uh, tighten up the spreadsheet because some of them properties I've seen today, I'm taking off my spreadsheet. I have to just do more research on the numbers. What's my max that I'm a bit? So I'm exhausted, man. I only had like two hours of sleep yesterday, but... I know I'm going to be up in at least until 1 in the morning, and then I'll be back up at maybe 7, down that code enforcement, trying to get some liens off of a property that I picked up, mm -hmm. and then going to drive about another 15 properties for Wednesday auction. Are you, are you traveling alone? No, I actually have someone with me. Okay, all right. I was going to say, because yep. sometimes this business can be real lonely, <laughs> and I was wondering if you okay. travel alone, hey, you're doing whatever it takes. Regardless, so you know, the thing of it is, Ryan, you've given these guys so much information, and I'm a type of guy. Most people say, "Well, why are you sharing Ryan's secrets?" Well, I believe in abundance. I believe in abundance because one of my gurus that I learned from said, "Hey, Terry, give everything you got because there's so much more inside of you." And so what I'm hoping Ryan gets out of this is by talking and, 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 and going over these details that it makes Ryan a better investor so that he makes even more money. And then I'm hoping the listeners hear what it takes to be a successful real estate investor. And once Ryan goes back and listen to this, he's, he t again, he tightens up his, his machine so that he gets better. Ryan doesn't want to believe in scarcity. He, he don't want to believe in, well, I'm not going to tell anybody because I got a fear they're going to be my competition or none of that. And that's what a lot of people do. So, you know, Ryan, hopefully, you know, you've learned that, hey, man, it's all about abundance. It's all about, you know, sharing some strategies because that's what other people are doing also. They're sharing it. There's enough for everybody, especially the people that get out and want to do it. That's the problem. Most people don't want to get out and do it. They say they do, but I don't know if they're going to do what Ryan does. 
All right, Ryan, come on, give me one more, man. Come on, one more nugget. I'm always going for one more. What was your biggest mistake? Well, you know what? My biggest mistake was overpaying for a property, not running my numbers correctly. Mm. Say that one more time, Ryan. Ryan, say that one more time and say it louder because I want these guys to hear what you just said in case they're, they're falling asleep right now and they've lost interest now that you know how, you know how to make money. I know there's one guy out there like you, one guy out there to me saying, come on, Ryan, keep delivering, keep delivering. Come on, Ryan, keep going. What was your biggest mistake? Overpaying for a property and not running my numbers correctly. That was my biggest mistake. Boy, that's, that, that's crucial. Now, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but now you got that one straightened out. Now we're going to right. adjust it. Now we want you to get better. All right. See, See you, you admitted your problem. Most people would say, ah, you know what? I didn't make no mistakes. I did everything perfect. No, 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 no. It's still a learning experience. <laughs> you got some years to go before you get to that perfection point. But this is what I learned. This is my mistake. I'm going to fix it. Now, okay, what am I going to do next to fix that one? And then you're going to look up, Ryan, and it's going to be check, 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 check. You're going to be like, wow, man, this is like taking candy from a baby. Yep. <laughs> but, but, but it's because of all these experiences and what you're going through right now. That's going to make you that type of guy. And at that point, you deserve it because you put in the work. Oh, yeah. All right, Ryan. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. Anything else for these guys? Anything else? Come on, reach in there deep, go deep. You know, last thing I would say is, um, man, you just got to just like zoom in on on the strategy and and just give it everything you got and just let that be your focus and and just don't get distracted by anything because, you know, you you have a life, you have family, it's so easy to, to lose track. And with me and what I would just tell people, to just focus on it and just keep on doing it, keep on learning as much and do it. You got to actually do it. Instead of taking in a ton of information, you got to jump out there. Get the action, and right? Get the action. Get the action going. Because that's where you really learn by by jumping out there and investing money into marketing or purchasing something uh, to really get that knowledge sometimes. You have to do it. You have to. And uh, you're only, you're only going to get better. And, you know, you'll thank yourself once you get past it. That's right. Get past all them fears, all that doubt, all the naysayers, all the dream killers. When you got that check in your hand, Ryan, all the noise seemed to stop for a moment, didn't it? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I was like, wow, virtual deal, that's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like now I'm like, I'm just going even more now because I'm like, okay, it's done. It's complete. I already know exactly what to do. So, like, every single day, I do it. Every day. <laughs> religiously. Religiously. Every, every day. Every single day. That, that's what I do every day. Man, Ryan, I'm telling you, you delivering, man. Every single day? The every single day. Every e- day. ESD. Every single day. ESD. Every single yep. day. Man, that's big. That's big. woo See, Ryan, I'm telling you, it's about abundance, see? You see how you bringing this out of you? Yep. That guru that taught me was right, man. Don't hold it in. Don't try to think, well, I ain't going to tell nobody. You would have never thought of ESD. You would have never thought about, you know, the details. So you got a lot more in you. Ryan, I know you got to (laughs) go. If it ain't to sleep, if it ain't to go look at some more properties, you got to go. I didn't already took enough of your time. I got 39 minutes of just pure content on how you did this amazing how, what do you call it again <laughs> it's a it's a co-wholesale virtual wholesale <laughs> sounds like you some star wars movie man <laughs> yeah you can mix it up but it's it's a virtual wholesale deal all you right know, right let's end it man <laughs> hey thanks a lot i appreciate it and uh hey we, we're waiting on the next check and we'll get back on here and do it again don't forget make a copy i know you already did because i got a copy of it and yeah. uh, write your details down take some pictures whatever it takes put it in your storage because you're going to be able to tell this case study in the future all right sounds good. all right ryan hey have a good one man thanks for you know giving us the time no problem take care all right bye, bye.